Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. So I've been trying to find a sweet spot to use Smite outside of a bubble build. I found that in a lot of my testing over the past few weeks, Smite has been so useful for running special condition missions. I finally created a fun build that's capable of killing just about any enemy and can support the team whenever we find ourselves in trouble. Your role with this build is to support your team whenever you hear alerts going off or the horde encounter is starting to roll in. You will want to play middle to rear of the team and ping the biggest threat that you can stagger. This will allow your team to focus on each threat while you hold the stagger. Something else I see a lot of players doing with Smite is that they just hold it down building max peril and then repeat. Well if you didn't know, some specialist targets can actually be pushed over after you release your Smite. This creates an opening for your melee attack if needed and can be used to stagger push back a pox burster away from your team before releasing it to detonate. Now Smite is going to be our main utility. It isn't very powerful but I found mixing our blitz with our main ability can actually lead into some incredibly good damage over time. However, I wanted to focus my build around keeping my team safe and managing everyone's priority when it came to picking out each target. Okay, I think that's enough chatting from me, let's talk about the build and the setup I went with. So as I said before, I wanted to focus on keeping my team safe, so I opted in for using the Mark IV Dueling Sword again with damage to Maniacs and Carapist Armored Enemies. The amount of times I've staggered Carapist Armored Enemies with Smite and no one gets a decent amount of damage and happens way too often. So I like to heavy chain into them and dodge backwards whenever they attack so I can mitigate their damage. As for my blessings, I went with Repost which gives us some of the greatest crit multipliers in all of Darktide. Crit chance on heavy chain hits can rip apart most enemies in just a couple hits. And lately with how my veteran was handling enemies with ease when applying rending, I chose Uncanny Strike for the stacks of rending that I can apply whenever I hit an enemy weak spot. Heavy chaining about 2 hits into any Carapist Armored enemy after horde clearing should be enough to put them down pretty quickly. If you don't have an option for Uncanny Strike, you can also go for Shred. This mix with our already good crit chance, because of Repost, can actually increase our crit chance even further. Testing between both of those blessings, I found them both to be very useful. And since I already had it, I tried this build out with the Elysee 4 Sword as well. I went with the exact same perks along with the exact same blessings, and it performed just as good. So use whatever you value more. Since I've been enjoying the Dueling Sword's speed a little bit more when it comes to horde clearing, I went with that this time. As for my secondary, I'm using the Surge Staff. It has great potential for killing any mid-range targets with ease, and lately I've been enjoying shutting down any Maniacs that push out to catch one of my teammates off guard. As you probably can guess, I went with damage to Maniacs and crit chance, since I wanted to have a pretty consistent amount of damage when it comes to crit damage. To gain that damage, I wanted specific blessings on this one, so I went with Warp Nexus for the consistency of our damage output since we're going to be usually at high peril for this build. As for the other blessing, I chose Warp Flurry. This allows us to put out quicker attacks, evening out the playing field whenever it comes to taking out any mid-range threat. For my Curios, I went with two Toughness Curios and a Max Health Curio. All with boost to health and toughness, as well as toughness regen speed and combat ability regen for quick quelling. Here's the talent tree that I went with, and these are the passes that I chose to be the most useful and the most fun for me. Since Smite has no real cooldown, we're going to be using it a lot with this build. Keep in mind though, this is supposed to be working in tandem with your main ability as well but you can use it to get out of really bad positioning and save your teammates from death. For our main ability, I went with Venting Streak, for the fast quelling of our peril since we actually can push through the cap if we vent just before we reach our limit with Smite. As I said before, this is going to be used alongside Smite, but for it to actually work as intended, we're going to need two other ability modifiers. But Calming Eruption is useful to keep Smite going for much longer after you activate your ability, especially in a Horde Encounter. Hitting a wide cone of enemies in front of you will maximize the amount of stacking you can get with this ability. And to make sure that we hit damage alongside with our Blitz, I wanted to use Creeping Flames again, which, if activated at high peril, you can actually capitalize on the high stacks of Soul Blaze while recycling your peril into using Smite for even longer. Since I haven't had a chance to make a build around Smite yet, I wanted to challenge myself to find a different way to use this Blitz besides bubbling. I went with Smite for the staggering effect that I can output on almost every enemy, and also for the Blitz modifier called Enfeeble, which can increase our base damage from all sources by 10%. This mixed with Creeping Flames will make it do a decent amount of damage from us alone, but this gives everyone a solid damage boost with their weapons as well. For my aura, I still find it very useful to have Seer's Presence. Since we're going to be using our Shriek as much as possible with this build, I wanted to get it back as quickly as I could. The Keystone abilities are going to be simplified for this build so we can maximize survivability later on. I went with Empowered Psionics for the 125% damage increase and the 50% faster spread. However, since Smite is used so sparingly, I actually found that we can recycle our points elsewhere. The only other Keystone modifier that I really wanted was Overpowering Souls for the guaranteed chance of a stack of Empowered Psionics on any elite kill. 
As for my passives, you might see some ties to my Warp Flame Prince build that I actually released a couple weeks ago. Lots of my passives are chosen to keep us directly engaged into the fight, while suppressing any enemies that are pushing into our team's personal space. As I said before though, this is built to constantly work alongside with the aggression of your team. You'll almost always want to play middle or rear of your team as you can ping targets that are the biggest threat to everyone before they get to you. Whenever you're coasting or you see an ally needing help, that's when you break out your physical weapons, slashing and zapping any targets who chose to pick on them instead of you. Since I find it activating fairly well with the whole loadout, Battle Meditation is what I wanted for my build. This gives us a 10% chance to get 10% of our peril quelled on any kill that we make. There's multiple ways to get this to activate, but with our mixed synergy, I found it popping often enough to allow my smite to carry on for much longer than needed. This build is definitely focused on pushing to high amounts of peril, so one with the warp was a no-brainer for the toughness damage reduction that we get based off of our current peril. Normally, regulating around 65-90% to peril is where you want to sit for this build to maximize damage reduction. Perilous Combustion spreads any soul blaze that we have further once we kill any elite or specialist enemy. This already mixed with our raw damage from our weapons can make for an absolute game changer. With most smite builds, I find the lack of damage really underwhelming. So feeding damage over time really changed how I felt when it came to being more essential to the team composition. Psychonetics Aura will feed us any necessary ability cooldown we can get when we're grouped up with our team. Within time, you can actually use your Shriek to push out Creeping Flames, then recycle any cooldown from your team to do it again. Puppet Master is also needed if we plan on getting the effects of the Aura to spread further to everyone in the party. Keep in mind that this is only applying to Seer's Presence, as this will allow everyone to get a massive cooldown when they activate their abilities. Quietude will actually keep our toughness replenished almost always. Activating our Shriek will give us toughness, but since Smite already has a pretty steady rate of earning peril, calling it will just recycle all of it into toughness. Smite, Vent, Rinse, Repeat. Solidity is a must-have for quelling Smite fast enough to output more stun locking on anything pushing your team that presents a big enough threat. Soul Stealer is another amazing passive that truly lets the Surge staff shine especially well with Quietude. Whenever we kill with a Warp Attack, we immediately replenish 7.5% of our toughness. Pretty much any time we're down on toughness, we can replenish with these two passives alone. With Warp Rider, we gain even more damage from all sources based on our current peril. This is where we use our staff for more consistent damage. The crit chance alone will push our damage to a much higher threshold whenever it procs, and as we ramp up our peril, we only become stronger. Just don't forget to quell. And lastly, since I used Wildfire so much with the other build I had previously, I really enjoyed watching it spread after I'd activate Creeping Flames. The spread that you get from Combustion is worth it, but those targets can't gain any more stacks, so this is definitely more useful for our Shriek's ability. For my operative modifiers, I spent way more points on nodes overall to keep my survivability up and the peril generation at a decent number. I also have boost in crit hit chance, health, toughness, and toughness damage reduction. We also took inspiring presence for allowing our toughness replenishment to directly affect our teammates too. This build has already carried me through some incredibly hard auric damnation missions already, and most of all, I finally found a use of smite that's way more enjoyable. I honestly felt like the Psyker has way too much utilities to focus on, so I wanted to minimize the amount of things I had to manage. Each portion of my loadout actually is focused for something specific. With your melee, you can fight any armored enemies in just a few heavy hits. The staff can control any mid-range battle against gunners or maniacs pushing to give someone on your team some trouble. And with Smite, you can stun and stagger most enemies to allow everyone to do the killing for you, all while you recycle the toughness replenishment out to your entire team. You're going to be a beacon of toughness regen for your entire team, so stay close to everyone, ping threats often, and try to keep everyone alive. As you probably saw by now, the beginning of this match was incredibly harsh. We lost two teammates very quickly and had crushers chasing us, but with Smite, we can control the rate at which they can do anything, so let your team focus the damage while you control their actions. I just want to say a quick thanks for watching and for keeping the positive vibes going in the comments section. A lot of your feedback has been really useful when I create these builds, so please keep it up. Anyways, let me get started on the next build, but in case you forgot, my name is Zen, and I hope to see you again real soon. Enjoy the rest of the match. Coming! 
Bastille! Medicaid station! Try this route. Every bit for style, and the walk to cartel so he's cut. Right this lane! Excessive force authorized! We could take a more civilized form of transport to our missions. You wait until we come under fire. That'll keep your eyes open. Doth not the blessed Valkyrie deliver of us in one piece that we might smite our enemies? Thank you. 
The beauty of the city is in its life. With that, you could see it as I do. Protocols. Target has requested. Barrels overloading! of the Holy Inquisition. Not bad, Explicator. When I had nothing, Hannibal raised me up, gave me purpose. Your fate too is your fault, Nothing else matters. Your secret holds you, don't they? I feel them floating at the top of your mind.
The barrel explodes!
Engage in war protocols! 